Hey guys, I am still alive. It has been a minute since I've been on YouTube, made a video. I know that it seems like this channel is a dead channel, but <laughs> while it may appear that way, it is not, I promise. It is just life right now. I have been super busy with this new house and in the middle of renovations, and y'all know me, I am a third shift healthcare worker, so everything that gets delivered to the house for the renovation is coming during the day when I'm trying to sleep and I have just not had the energy for YouTube lately. If something had to give, the thing was YouTube. I just did not have the energy to film and edit and upload videos regularly. That being said, I am keeping up with the budget. That is what this video is going to be. It's going to be the March budget review so y'all can see what I have done with all of the money that I have brought in for the month. I am still getting overtime from work as well at minimum every other week, if not every week. So that has also contributed to my absence here lately. It is what it is lately, you guys. I will try to do better once everything is done here at the house, but things are happening. And so for this video, I'll do the budget review first, and then I will show you guys everything that's happened around the house, some things that I've had delivered, projects I'm working on, and also I have decided to change the kitchen renovation. I'm not going to do as much as I had originally planned, so some of y'all will probably be happy about that. And reasoning for that is basically just to save some money. I'm still going to have a nice kitchen, but it will save some money and allow me to invest a little bit more. So with all of that said, if you are new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you being here. I am on YouTube documenting my journey to reach financial independence and retire early. I am very transparent on the channel. I show you guys my real numbers, the income I bring in and how I choose to spend, save, or invest it because that makes all the difference when it comes to reaching fire. If you've been with me for the years that I have been on YouTube, you know I started this journey in a hole. I had a very negative net worth, a ton of debt, and I'm still working my way through consumer debt actually, but um, just not aggressively so at the moment. But the ultimate goal here is financial independence to retire early. So if you're trying to do that for yourself, then I hope that this channel will give you some motivation on your own journey. All of that said, let's get into the budget because I am sure this is going to be another long video. So y'all just grab a beer, grab a coffee, tea, whatever your drink of choice is and get comfy because this will be another long video for me. <laughs> All right, here we are looking at my Google Sheets March 2022 budget. And also for this video, I'm trying my AirPods for the first time, so hopefully the sound is okay. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit more consistent using the AirPods throughout the video than using the laptop mic for this portion of it and just my phone for the rest of the video. So I'm gonna try it out for this one and see how it sounds when it comes to editing. Anyway, March budget review. Starting at the top as always with my income. Y'all can see that when I set up these budgets, I have money that I carry over from month to month. It is a lot of money right now because I have just moved. I sold my old house, moved to this house. I had a good bit of profit from the home sale. I've done videos on that if y'all want to go back and look at those long videos again, sorry, but I had to do what I had to do. Anyhow, I have a lot of money sitting in my checking that I'm just letting stay there for the moment and roll over every month until these home renovations that I'm wanting to do are finished. So that is why the carryover amounts very high. But anyway, I set up the budget every month and what I plan for goes in column C. What actually happens goes in column D. I do block out some income sources for privacy. I will say that March was a three page paycheck month for me and when I set up this budget I had my third paycheck in there but ultimately I decided to move that third paycheck to April because I'm getting paid on the 31st the very last day of March so technically I'm going to use that paycheck in April anyway so I just bumped the third paycheck to April that just made more sense to me to do it that way. Anyhow, y'all can see that I planned on total income for March 
being about $25,000, but most of that is the carryover from the previous month. What actually happened was I had quite a few things that I was not planning on initially that happened. So we have the carryover that was on target. My Fidelity card, I use a credit card from Fidelity for most of my purchases and it automatically rewards me 2% back that goes into my Fidelity account. So for the budget to balance, I account for that here. So you'll see this 23681 in the fidelity row for my investing section the ikea refund so long story short i will go over what i have decided to do with my kitchen um but i had big plans that i was going to replace all the cabinets and do a bunch of stuff and i made a huge order from ikea ikea ended up being a nightmare to deal with and ultimately i just decided to cancel the order completely and they refunded my card i had already had my fidelity card paid off at this point so this ended up just being a negative balance but We'll see when we get to my bills and spending section here next. I made it back up quite quickly. So that was $6,000, almost $900 of a refund from Ikea. I also got some checks in the mail that I assume are my escrow refund and my home insurance refund from the old place. Uh, first one was $875.94 and then a $347 check. I do have a... Ko-Fi page or coffee, I don't know how you pronounce it. I like to say it Ko-Fi, but I have this budget spreadsheet and some other spreadsheets that I use on the channel that are on my Ko-Fi page. If you like those, the link to those are in the description box down below. They are free, you guys. You can download them for free if you like these spreadsheets that I use, but every once in a while I do get a donation through the Ko-Fi page. So if you have sent me a donation through there, thank you very much. I appreciate it and I do account for it in the budget. <laughs> Lastly here is Amazon Associates and I did get a $18.89 payout from my Amazon Associate affiliate links that I post in the description box. Every once in a while someone will buy something on Amazon, use my affiliate links, and once I get enough saved up in my Amazon Associates account, they will pay me out. You have to have at least a $10 threshold and for a channel this small, that takes a while. But I did get a payout this month and that was $18.89. So grand total here. I had expected about $25,000 for the month and I got like $34,000 for the month. So good thing because we'll see as we move down into my bills and spending section that I have done some spending again this month. But the home situation is ongoing. So that is that is where the money is going right now. Starting at the top, this is my first new mortgage payment for this place. $735 even. It's not exactly that. I just rounded up to be even. My utilities for this house, I budgeted $160 and that actually ended up being pretty close. I came in at $156.67. That covers, you know, my heat and air conditioning, um, trash pickup, water, all of of that is included in the utilities for this house. I did get a bill for the water bill from the old house. I think this is the last one I'll get, we'll see. But typically I would budget $40 for my water bill at the old place and it came in at $42.40. Next, phone. This is for my cell phone. I use Mint Mobile. I do have a referral link for them in the description box below, y'all. I only pay my phone bill once a year. I love, love, love Mint Mobile. I have zero issues with dropped calls. The coverage is great. Do not overpay for your cell phone service. Yes, it's kind of a headache to switch providers, but do it. I pay $263.76 a year for phone service. And yeah, I am super happy about Mint Mobile, but I very rarely talk about them on the channel just because I don't have to pay a phone bill every month. I much prefer to pay it once a year and be done with it, especially when it's only 260 bucks. Next, this is the internet for this place. I have at and and I budgeted $65. I think that's what it's supposed to be. I came in at $55.21, but I think this is for a partial month. After that, Gym 2306. This is my Planet Fitness membership that I will eventually cancel because there's not one near here, but I'm doing some big bathroom renovations for this house. And once we get to that point, I am going to keep this gym membership so that I'll have a place to go and shower while they're working on the bathrooms if I need it. Next, gas for my car, you guys. Could not be happier with this budget. If you've been with me for a while, then you know that my commute to my job from my old house was about an hour and 10, 15 
15 minutes one way. And I do 12 hour shifts at night where I work. So I was going through some gas and I would usually budget 250 bucks when I lived at the old house. And that was before gas prices really started going up, you guys. So I picked a good time to move. I knew that I would be spending less in gas here, but I decided to budget 200 just in case I had to do extra running around when I was off work because of things the house might need. Anyway, I budgeted $200 and I actually came in at less than $125 for gas for my car. And this is with gas at over $4 a gallon where I am. So yeah, really happy about that. I only spent $121.50 for gas in the month of March. Next, Lowe's. The next three things actually here, Lowe's, Home Depot, and Wayfair. This is all stuff for the house that I'll show you at the end of this video. Bunch of little things from Lowe's added up to $200. $260.58. Home Depot. This is mostly a stackable washer and dryer that I bought, um, but I did get some other things. I got a new sink for the kitchen and something else that I cannot remember at this time, but I spent about $2,200 at Home Depot. Wayfair. This is the first time that I have really used Wayfair for anything major and I was really pleased with them you guys. First of all, they tell you what they have in stock and what they don't because you know supply chain issues are a thing right now and I needed to get a bunch of stuff for my bathroom renovations. This home right now is a one and a half bath and I am basically renovating this place to make it a two full bathroom house and I need new everything for both bathrooms basically. So I spent about $6,100 on Wayfair getting all of the bathroom bathroom stuff that I can pick out in so it would be ready for my contractor to get going and I could not be happier with that process especially after dealing with the nightmare that was Ikea. Wayfair was easy as could be. I picked out things that I liked that they had in stock. They got delivered. It was super simple. Uncomplicated. It was as easy as ordering from Amazon. Next after that is something that I have forgotten to account for because I have not had to go to a laundromat and do my laundry that way since I I was in college you guys but I don't technically have a washer and dryer hooked up right now because the way the bathroom renovations are gonna go I need to wait for my contractor to knock out some walls and things and rearrange where the washer and dryer hookups are in this house so <laughs> For a while, I'm gonna have to go to the laundromat to get my laundry done, and this month I spent in total $40.50 there. Car insurance, I had a slight increase when I moved here in my car insurance, so I had to pay that difference, which was $12.53. Next after that, my catch-all miscellaneous food, household, eating out budget. <laughs> so. I budget 500 bucks for this every month and I am a chronic overspender in this area, but I'm actually pretty pleased with this month because I budgeted $500 like usual, but I have been eating out more than I typically do. In fact, back at the old house, I had my routine so down pat that I very rarely ever ate out at all. So here is a little bit different. Things are just an upheaval right now. And with everything that I am doing on my days off around here, sometimes I just do not feel like cooking you guys. So I have been eating out more than I usually do. Also, this includes an extra grocery shopping trip for the month. I had one more than what I usually go. I typically shop on Saturdays, but because of some overtime and things that I'm getting at work, I had to make an extra grocery trip. So I'm actually kind of pleased that it was only $724.09. I expect that once life settles down a little bit, that even with the inflation and rising grocery prices, I'm pretty sure I can get this back under control and at or around $500. So I'm not gonna bump it up for the time being. I'm just gonna give myself some grace while life is getting straightened out here. <laughs> Moving on down after that, land survey. This is another home expense that I have had to do because this house does not have a fence. I still don't have a fence currently for Rollo, my dog, and he definitely needs a fence, you guys. So in order for my contractor to put my fence up for me, we had to be clear where the lot lines are. So I paid for a land survey to come out. I had to wait weeks for them to come out. They were very backed up, but that ended up being $700 and I have all the stakes out in my yard right now. Everything is marked and ready to go for my contractor with the fence, which will hopefully start going up soon. Next, I 
after that, I kept seeing this ad on Facebook for these allergy chews for your pets. And Rollo really does suffer with allergies in the summertime. I, I suspect that he's allergic to grass, but Anyway, I thought that I would give these allergy chews a try. So $134.99 there, it's a lot to spend at once, but this was a four month supply for him. My dog is huge. He's 140 pounds, an Irish wolfhound if you didn't know. So whenever you get anything medication or supplement wise, you have to account for their size. So he needs bigger doses. This is a four month supply and it is cheaper than the Apoquel that he usually goes on during the summer. And I'm trying not to do that if I can help it. This is like an all natural supplement kind of thing that's supposed to help with allergies. And he's been taking it now for a couple of weeks. I know it can take some time for these things to start working, but really I've already seen an improvement. So I'm kind of hopeful that I'm gonna keep up uh, with these chews for him. He is not scratching as much as he usually does in the springtime. It's not 100% improved, but it's way better than it usually is. So for his quality of life, I'm okay with that. Next, pros. So again, this is Facebook advertising that I fell prey to. I kept seeing this stuff advertised for hair. It's basically fancy shampoo and conditioner and other products for your hair. But the thing that attracted me to them was that they do a very thorough like questionnaire that you fill out that has to do with your zip code where you live, the type of water that you have, the amount of pollution in the area, your lifestyle, your hair type, things that you struggle with, goals you want for your hair, whether you're a curly girl like me or straight, like they, it was a very in-depth questionnaire. And then they take all of those results and create a customized formula for you. Quite expensive at $116.69. And this was just for an eight ounce bottle of shampoo, conditioner. I got a scalp treatment thing and some like curly hair product to put in afterwards. And it was all $116.69. And honestly, as thick as my hair is, I'm not sure that those eight ounce bottles are going to last very long but I thought I would give it a try and see if it's really worth that amount of money or not. I suspect that it's not going to be worth that amount of money. I still use and love my Lus products, L-U-S brand. I do have it in right now, but my hair's still kind of wet. I just took a shower before I started this video, but um, I do like those products and they're less expensive, at least compared to Pros, but I figured I would give Pros a shot and see if it's actually worth the hype or not. But first I'm going to use all my other products that I have already on hand. So it'll be a while before we get a verdict on that. Next after that is Retro Pie. Okay, so if you didn't know, I'm actually a huge nerd. Um, I really enjoy like old video games and I decided to buy myself a Raspberry Pi. I have been looking at one of these for years, honestly, but I always told myself that you don't actually have the time to play old games. You know, why spend the money? It's almost $300, right? So just later, later, later. But I finally decided to just bite the bull and do it because honestly guys, when here lately, when I have had some downtime, I know that I should be making videos and editing and uploading to YouTube and all of that, keep this channel going, but I have not had the energy for it. And playing these old like Nintendo 64 and Super Nintendo games from my childhood, it's just a great way for me to mentally unwind. So I consider this like mental health self-care really. If I didn't have the energy to make the YouTube videos, then at least I could kind of relax and play some games here lately. So all of you that are familiar with those old games, hey, listen, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been enjoying that and playing me some Legend of Zelda here recently. Next after that is Amazon. As usual, I do have some Amazon spending every month. Not all of this is house stuff. Some of it is, some of it is just the usual things that I get off of Amazon. I had budgeted 250 bucks because I figured I would be spending some money on Amazon. I was correct. <laughs> but I actually spent 401 dollars All right, lastly here, tax preparation. I did get my taxes done this month. That was another thing on the to-do list that I was trying to get handled. And I do have a CPA that I use. And last year it was $200. They've gone up a little bit, but that's okay. It was $240. And I am getting back a bit of a refund, honestly. With as much money as I made last year, y'all know how much overtime I work. I made well into the six figures for the first time ever in my life. 
life last year just because I worked so much overtime. And so between the extra income there, extra income from YouTube and business things, I wasn't sure if I was going to owe or get anything back. And it turns out I'm getting a pretty significant amount back, about $2,400 in total. So, I mean, I guess that's better than owing $2,400. I would prefer it to be closer to zero, but close enough, whatever. So paid my CPA the $240 to handle all of my taxes and that is well worth it. I just love having the peace of mind knowing that it is done right by somebody who knows what they're doing. Not me trying to figure things out myself, especially with an LLC business involved. Grand total for the month here, ahead of time I had budgeted $2,400, it's laughable. I spent $12,637.91 in March. I knew when I set up this budget it was going to be more than this, but really I just, I didn't have a clue how much I was going to spend when it came to starting to get things going for the bathroom renovations as well. So yeah, this budget just is what it is. I planned what I knew I was going to spend, but I knew that I was going to go over that amount. The next section here, this is the last debt that I have left. I have a trailblazer that I bought last year new. My monthly payments on it are like $493. I just round up to $500 and that is what I paid. My interest rate on it is super low at 1.98%, which is why I do not pay on that car aggressively at the moment because the markets are still off of all-time highs. As long as they are off of all-time highs, then I'm going to focus more on investing when I get the chance versus paying off the car because my interest rate is just so low on the car. But I have already decided that once the S&P 500 gets back to its all-time highs at about 4,800, it's sitting around 4,600 right now, so it's really not too far off. But once we get back to all-time highs and go up from there, then I will start focusing on paying off the car again. So I'm gonna flip over to the April budget here so we can see where the current balance is for my car. I have a debt breakdown section at the bottom of every tab on my budget. So starting April 1st, this is where the balances are on all of the debts that I have remaining. So I only have the car and my house and my car balance is now officially under 30,000. Yay. I do have a color sheet that I made for my car so I can actually color in an icon on it. We will do that later because I'm also going to have to color in some spaces on my fire tracker color chart as well. Anyhow, the car balance is currently at $29,747.76. Again, fixed interest rate, very low at 1.98% of my $500 payment, 454.12 went towards the principal. And my mortgage balance for this new house right now is sitting at just over $131,000. So we are only one payment in, most of that payment went to interest, but that's okay. That's how it goes with the amortization schedule. My interest rate for this house is 3.88% fixed. And just quickly looking at my year to date totals towards debt, this is only the non-mortgage debt. And so far this year, $1,500, my $500 car payment every month. Most of that has gone towards the principal. I've lost about 140 to interest. Flipping back over to March here. All right, this is my favorite section of the budget. You guys know, this is my investing and fire tracking portion of the budget. This is where I list all of my investing accounts that I have, and I keep track of the balances in column E over here. <laughs> Y'all can see here, we are hitting some milestones again. But anyway, starting with my M1 accounts, I have a taxable account at M1 and a Roth IRA. I've already maxed out my Roth IRA for the year. I picked a good time to do that when the markets were down. So yeah, I'm happy about that, but I can't contribute anymore to the Roth IRA for 2022. My taxable account, I didn't throw anything else at that. I have thrown some at it last month when the markets were really down, but as of right now, I'm trying to hang on to extra cash for these renovations around here because you just never know. I do have a Coinbase account, so I do have some crypto in there, and I also have a Ledger Nano cold storage device that has some crypto on it. So this $150 I threw at my Coinbase account because they were doing a promotional giveaway type thing where if you bought $100 plus worth of crypto, then you could be entered to win some prizes. So I was like, eh, I have extra money, why not? I'll take a chance. So 
So I bought another $150 worth of Bitcoin this month for the chance to win some bigger prizes. Lastly listed here is my work retirement account, my 403B. So the first line is my contributions. I budgeted about $700 because I knew I was getting some overtime this month and I came in at $645.37. My employer match is the last line. I thought it would be around $300, but it ended up being $368.79. So grand total this month towards investing was just over $1,400. Not too bad. That makes my savings rate. We'll scoot over here. 9% for the month. Not great for fire movement people, but at least I'm saving something. Once these renovations are done, then my savings rate is going to go way up. Depending on if I invest the extra money that I have, if the markets are still down, or I may decide to throw extra money at my car, just depending where the markets are at, we'll see what happens. I don't include debt payments in my savings rate. So if I throw all my extra money that I have once the renovations are done at my car, then it is what it is. But if I can get my car paid off this year, then I will have that much extra money cash flow every month that I can start throwing into the market regardless of where the market is. So that's my thoughts there. As far as my account balances and all of these different investing accounts, y'all, I have reached some milestones this month. My taxable account at M1 is around $5,700. My Roth IRA at M1, I updated my balances today, March 30th, and the markets were down a little bit today. And and this Roth IRA was sitting over $30,000 for the first time ever. And guys, I actually looked at my Roth IRA at the end of February last year, and it was just under $10,000. So it is insane to think that I have almost tripled my Roth IRA balance in one year. That includes my contributions, of course, and it includes contributions for the year of 2020, 2021, and 2022. So, you know, there's been some contributions all squished into that one year, but still, I have seen some amazing growth in my Roth IRA. It's, it's really nice to see this progress. The next one is my account with Fidelity that I have. I have a taxable account, and this is where I do options trading. It is also where I keep extra cash to just earn some interest and use it for options trading until I need it for things like the renovations around here. So I do have a bunch sitting here that are either tied up in options or I have about, I think 11 or 12,000 right now just sitting in cash that I can dip into if and when I need it. But I'm gonna try not to, but I know I'm gonna have to dip into some of this at some point for these renovations, most likely because I'm doing a lot around here. But as of right now, this account sits at almost $54,000. Next after that is the crypto accounts that I have. I just lump them all together and my total account balance as of right now is sitting at $13,349.48 worth of cryptocurrency. It is mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum. Lastly here is my work retirement account and my total account balance there Another milestone. For the first time ever, this account is over $120,000. It's sitting at $120,629.06. That is insane for me to say. So if you watched the February budget review, you know that last month I was sitting at a portfolio balance of just over $200,000, which absolutely blew my mind because in February 2021, I hit another milestone. I hit $100,000 in my portfolio. This is mostly due to my home sale, which is what has given my fire journey here such a violent shove forward so quickly. But still, it's just crazy to think that last Last month, I crossed 200,000. February 2021, I crossed 100,000. And here it is the end of March. And I am sitting at $222,243.71 in the portfolio. So y'all know that I have this fire color chart that keeps track of the journey up to a million dollars. And 
every block in that color chart is worth $10,000. So we have a couple of blocks to color in that we will get to momentarily along with my car debt color sheet. But totals here at the bottom for March to wrap this up here. I am left over with about $21,000 that will roll over into April. And I'm just gonna let that sit in the checking. Again, it is ready for home renovations whenever those really get going hot and heavy. And as far as my am I financially independent yet number, my goal is to reach 1.2 million invested. So with the portfolio value sitting here at $222,000, I'm about 18 and a half percent of the way there. That's crazy. I remember when this number was less than 5%. It's just wild to think about the progress that I have made here so quickly. Incredibly grateful for it. Yes, I've worked hard for it as well, but I can't deny that I have had some good fortune as well and good timing with the markets and the home sale, et cetera, et cetera. These are all decisions that I've made to push the fire journey forward as much as I can. So let's get to the color charts next and then we'll talk about life updates around the house here. Okay, this is gonna be extremely difficult to color in on camera, but I will do my best. So starting with my car debt color chart here, y'all can see that I kind of just custom made this on Canva and every icon represents about $2,000 worth of this car debt paid off. So now that I am officially under 30K, I will color in this 30K car. and I had to choose blue because that is honestly about the color of my car. It is a very bright blue trailblazer. Next, we'll move over here to the fire tracker. And this one is just so cool. I did not create this, um, but I thought that it was neat. It was free on the internet. Y'all can do a Google search and find this if you like it. But every section here on this color chart represents $10,000 until you get to 1 million. Now, my goal is 1.2 million. So I'll have to figure out some kind of way to value these whenever I actually get up to a million dollars. But that will be a ways down the road so let's just come right on down here to where i'm at on this color chart which is in the 200 thousands so last month y'all can see i had a big month because i threw about fifty thousand dollars into my fidelity account so i colored in about five sections here and this month was another big month i really didn't add a whole lot to the portfolio as far as investing this month but I had some growth with the market recovery that happened. Well, it's not really a recovery, but the markets did kind of recover some and it helped out the portfolio. Anyhow, I need to color in two blocks here. We are at 220,000 in the portfolio. So I will color in these two blocks. And I am really excited to start seeing this portfolio work for itself. They say that the first 100,000 is the hardest. I would agree. And once you get to that point, you can really start seeing some compound interest work for you. And I have to agree, this, y'all can see here, I, I got this color chart when I was sitting at about 70,000. And that was in 2020 in July. But Y'all can see, I was making some slow progress through 2020. $100,000 happened in 2021 in February. And then here in 2022, February, I hit 200,000 in the portfolio. And now it's just March and I'm at 220. It's, it's just crazy. I did make a note because I update my portfolio several times throughout the month. And I did make a note that I hit this 210,000 on um, March. 19th of 22 and today i updated the portfolio and i was at 220,000, and that is march 30th so there we have it i managed to get another 20,000 gain in the span of one month just crazy okay as far as the home renovations go i really do not know where to start in this place but i'm in the bedroom color in those color charts so we'll start here i guess this is the um, nice little light fixture that I bought and put up myself. 
I also bought some light and sound blocking curtains, naturally being a third shift worker like I am. So I put up all of that, the curtain rod and the curtains. Moving on, this is the office and Right now, this is just where everything that came for the bathroom renovations got thrown because this room is absolutely full of boxes. Some of these are um, vanities for the new bathroom. Some are faucet fixtures. I've got mirrors in here, towel holders, new shower fixtures. Y'all, there's just a ton of stuff in here that will be in the bathrooms once they are renovated. If you missed the last video, we're walking by here, may as well show you the state of the bathrooms. Like I mentioned before, this is a one and a half bath house right now and it, it needs help. It's just, the shower, it's brown. <laughs> Also, there was a leak behind the wall. The shower fixture was loose when I moved in, so that's temporarily fixed so that we can use the shower. But yeah, this has got to go. I'm gonna redo the shower in here and we have enough space with the, um, this is where the washer and dryer is supposed to go in this first bathroom. I'm just using it for storage right now, but this space is going to get taken up to expand the second bathroom so that it can be a full bathroom and also the closet in the master bedroom is probably going to come this way as well so I can have a little bit bigger of a closet but that seemed to be a better use of space for this laundry area to make two full bathrooms and a larger master closet and then that way in the hallway here there's this storage area where the water heater is. I have a tankless water heater, which is nice, but the rest of this is just kind of wasted space for storage. So this is where the washer and dryer is going to go once my contractor reroutes everything that you need for the washer and dryer. You're gonna have to put the, um, the hookups in there, which he said shouldn't be too difficult since my hot water heater is already in there, but here in the living room, y'all can see there is the stackable washer and dryer just hanging out, waiting for its turn in the renovation. I also have more boxes sitting here. This is kitchen sink and microwave that is supposed to eventually go above the stove over here. I'm gonna have a microwave up there. I also have the parts for the washer and dryer. And then I have these rustic kind of shelves sitting here that I'm going to put, there's a couple different boxes here and I'm going to put them on the wall over here. So the original plan for this kitchen was to get all new cabinets and quartz countertops, build a custom island and it was going to be super nice, you guys, but it was going to be pricey and I have decided to change things up. I think what is likely going to happen is that I am just going to reface all of the cabinets. The cabinets themselves are in pretty good condition, so if I can just reface them and get some hardware on here that I like, that'll be fine. Sure, I won't have the under cabinet lighting that I had planned on getting from Ikea, but that's okay. <laughs> I can do without, it's fine. I am still planning on getting quartz countertops, so I'm gonna replace this laminate countertop here, but I'm not going to build a custom island anymore. I'm going to still replace the sink and the faucet, and I did get a new dishwasher installed because the one that was here in the house was just not a good dishwasher. And I hate having a crappy dishwasher that you have to run twice to get your dishes clean. So I just got a new dishwasher and have that installed, but I'm no longer going to do the custom island. I bought an island on Wayfair and it is halfway done here. Well, mostly done, I guess you could say. It's missing the countertop because the countertop that came with it is very light colored and it does not match the dark furniture that I have and these darker wood shelves that I got for the wall behind me. So 
my mom's room right now. She stays with me sometimes, but she is not here right now. Sorry for getting dark on you there. My mom's room has turned into a staining room. The stools for the kitchen island are here. And I decided to sand and stain the seats for the stools and the top of the kitchen island is here in the floor. So mom's room has become my staining project area. I have never stained anything before in my life, but I'm pretty pleased with the way that they came out. So this is another project that I have got on my table for tonight. Once this video is done, I'm going to put all this stuff together and organize my new kitchen island. So moving on from here, sorry to just keep wandering around the house randomly, but back in the master bathroom right now, y'all can see that's the um, vanity that we have right now. It's got some lights out, not a huge fan of it. So this is going to get completely replaced. And here in the half bath is the vanity for um, the bathroom that is next to the master bedroom. So this is all it is. A vanity with, again, lighting and a mirror that I am not a fan of. And back to the master bedroom that is very unmade right now. <laughs> so don't judge me, doing what I can. So this half bath is quite small, but since I am moving the laundry area. The laundry area is behind this wall. So this wall is going to get completely taken out and we can expand this half bathroom and make it into a full bathroom. And then the master closet here, I'm going to be losing a little bit of space on this side of the closet to expand the bathroom. So from here over is going to be lost about, but then the rest of the closet will be deeper because I can go back into where the old laundry center is. So yeah, that is where we're at with the home renovation plans. Really things are moving along. It's just that I have had so much stuff come to the house and y'all know, I mean, I'm a third shift worker and when you're getting deliveries every other day and you still have to work at night and Rollo is barking his head off whenever I get something delivered, I have to wake up to get things into the house or allow people to bring it into the house. I had to wake up in the middle of the day and let them install my dishwasher one day and I had worked the night before. It's I've just been tired, you guys. And when I do get some time off, then I'm working on these various projects around the house myself, like staining the kitchen island, putting that kitchen island together. It's kind of a like an Ikea deal. It came in a box and I had to put everything together myself. So things are moving along. It's just been very taxing trying to do it myself and also work third shift and also pick up overtime a lot. So it is what it is, but things are going and I can't promise you that I'm going to upload as often as I used to while things are still happening here, but I'll do the best that I can do. I hope that you guys stick around for the journey. If you appreciate the transparency, then don't forget to leave me a like down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And honestly, I could use all the help with that algorithm that I can get because I know that it is not going to like this channel for the inconsistent uploads, but such is life right now, guys, so yeah. If you like this video, then subscribe if you haven't already. This is the type of content that I do here on the channel, and I hope that I'll see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye.